This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. We're going to go to Omar here, but uh, I see Norton is wishing his uh, wife a happy birthday. Rusty, happy birthday from uh, all of us on the show. All right, let's go to the man, the myth, the legend that is Omar Kelly, who uh, had some of his head cut off. Now he's trying to, uh, there we go. He's trying to get a complete shot there. There we go. There we go. How you Hello. doing? Hello. Good morning. How you doing, man? You doing all right? Yeah, man. I'm good. Can't complain. Did you see the report by uh, Marcel uh, Jacques-Louis? No. What did you report? Uh, Apparently, uh, Flo wasn't even talking to his assistant coaches from Thanksgiving on. They didn't even know about meetings and times and what was going on. And that's that's how bad it was in that building. He wasn't even talking to his assistant coaches. And they were in a winning streak. He got a little weird during the wins. He acted well, a little weird. He acted weirder during the wins than he did during the losses, to be honest with you. I think yeah. there was the humility that the losses caused, and then the wins just got weird. Got, well, I, 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 he should have stayed away from the whole team the entire season. They would have had an undefeated season. You know that I, you would have been covering an undefeated team right now. If Flo doesn't talk to anybody, because clearly that was, that was the equation. If we get no Flo... Hey, we're all, we're on a go, but uh, if we have to get an overload of flow, where we're done, it's over. That's it. The overload of flow. Uh, I'm I'm not in. I'm not on or into or interested in the piling on at this point. Okay, we and it's you. We know the man's an asshole. Like, <laughs> it. it and it just goes to show you, I was having this conversation earlier today. Do you wonder why very few people are coming to his defense? No. <laughs> I mean, it, it, no. I mean, listen, did I not tell you for months what was going on back there, that he was acting like an idiot, that he was, that he was barnstorming through that place? Like Josh McDaniels, I kept telling you, go look, go look, go 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 see, go find out. I, I knew about all this stuff that he it was going because obviously I've been told about what's been going. No, I'm sorry, I'm guessing. I I guess I don't really. I'm not told anything. I guessed about what was going on back there that um that it was ugly. So I'm not surprised that nobody is coming to the man's defense. I'm really not. I wish him the best. I, I hope for maturity. I hope for anger management courses or completion. Um, I, I I would like to think that uh, he's learned from this experience. Now, the question is, have the Dolphins learned from this experience? Boom. And that's, remember, we talked about this in the past. Uh, remember I told you how he had a lot of influence in personnel because he was so on top of these guys constantly. And they, the mistake they cannot make this time around is they made it with Gase and they made it with this guy. You uh, Unless you're hiring, you know, Parcells and Jimmy Doug Johnson. Doug Peterson? Unless it. you're hiring Doug Peterson? I'm not giving him personnel power either. I'm not giving him personnel power. That's my point. Unless yeah. I'm hiring a G, a G, you know, that if you hire Saban, you have no choice. Unless I'm hiring a G, I'm not giving you power. You can make a suggestion, but there's no more of this where I control what goes on. But, but 53. no, no, no. You don't get to pick the groceries anymore. You just that kind of undermines groceries. who Chris Greer is, though. I, well, but but he, if Chris Greer wants to last in this job, he has to he has to do it this way. This he's time. done it twenty years in no, the, no, his no, way. No, he has not. No, he is not. Don't be ignorant. No, in this no, job. In no, this no, 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 no. He never told Saban what to do, dude. He's not telling Parcells what to do. He's not telling Ireland what to do. He's not telling anybody what to do. Ben Stop Bob it. what to do. Dude, dude yeah. don't, don't even go down that rabbit hole and fall with all the other idiots that keep saying, well, he's been here for 20 years. It's him. He's been taking orders for 20 years. 
It's his turn now. He needs but to start my, giving orders. My my point, and I, I don't disagree with you. I do not disagree with you. My point is, and this is something that I discovered when he was initially given the general manager job, and I wrote a story on it, talking to people who actually worked with him, his peers, his contemporaries. And their biggest concern was, this is a man who's never had a conviction a day in his life. Like, that's how he survived. That's how he's thrived. That's how he's risen. It's, you know, blending in, yeah. going along. And now you're in a leadership position. You yeah. you, you yeah. are the head man in charge. Yep. And the, the problem that we have, and hopefully Steve Ross has had a conversation with him, you have to act like you're the head man in charge. You right. have to conduct business like you're the head man in charge. And... You know, that's part of the reason why we, we why Steve Ross set up this. It, Steve Ross used to have a three-pronged power structure. Right. And it always kind of fostered dysfunction because, you know, everybody couldn't stay in their lane and one man always wanted power. Now, he created this structure knowing that Chris Greer is, doesn't have that kind of ego. Chris Greer doesn't have a power doesn't doesn't have the desire to be all powerful, the all seeing. He doesn't need credit. Okay, that's great. But now, after you've learned and experienced this with now two head coaches who steamrolled you, um, you got you got to have some convictions and you got to exactly. stand to them. And you 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 have you are accountable. Like even if you didn't want Josh Rosen, and this is a perfect example. Even if you did not want Josh Rosen, you should not have let your head coach steamrolling you into trading for Josh Rosen. Like, why was your why was your evaluation the first time so wrong? And then you see him as a rookie suck, and then all of a sudden you're gonna trade a second and a fifth for him? Like, I'm sorry. I yeah. know the coach wants him, but that's on you. No, I know, I know, and that's where and that's where. If he wants to keep the job long term, well then, dude, fall on your own sword. Don't fall on somebody else's sword, and that's what you and that's what you're doing if you're Chris Greer. So now, the next coach, you got to make sure that that coach understands that Mackenzie Allen and Greer are in charge of the talent. They will shop for the groceries, and you will cook for them, and we will do a good job for you. And you can make a suggestion, but you're not making any demands. And I think that's what you have to do with the next coach because you're not hiring a G because if you hired a G, he would fire everybody anyway because <laughs> they're going to bring in their own guy anyway. You know what I mean? So you're not hiring a G. Make sure you hire somebody that is willing to work with you guys than making you try to take orders from them. Yeah, they're all willing to work until they actually get the job and then right. say, ah, right. I'm not winning because I need – a, right. a tight end who worked in my system for me back in Chicago. Right. Or I need, you know, the safety that played for me in New or the linebacker that played for me in New England. So he knows my scheme. So right. he can make my, he can correlate what I'm trying to communicate to the team. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's, that's, you know, that's the thing. So, um, this process, I am, um, I am now guessing, it's actually may drag past the Senior Bowl now, because uh, I'm guessing Senior Bowl is like right around the corner, bro. Do you are you thinking some of, some of the candidates are involved in the playoffs? Are you hearing yeah. the same? Are you hearing the same guesses? Isn't isn't the Senior Bowl like next week? Yep. Yeah, come on, man. We're not doing this before next week. Like you crazy? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Senior Bowl's in two weeks? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, East-West and then Senior Bowl. But the back end of the East-West runs into the Senior Bowl. It's re it's really odd this year, dude. The the East-West, the, the NFL PA uh, and, and, the, and the Senior Bowl are all running into let, – let, let, let me get your take on, on this question because you, you, you're like me. You, you, you love this process. Why doesn't the NFL PA Bowl let underclassmen in? Oh, uh, the only the only reason I would think is only because they don't want to influence more juniors. They're already coming no. out. 
I, I know I, I know they are, Omar. I'm not yeah, arguing. They're coming out to go undrafted. I'm not arguing with you. I'm telling you the optics of that's it. So that's, that's, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. I'm it's just the talking. definition of dumb. I, I, I know I know all the people that put all these games. If, together. if you're the NFL PA and you are responsible for the workforce, why would you care about college football number one? And wouldn't you, for these young underclassmen who are coming into the draft, wouldn't you like to get them an opportunity to showcase themselves in doing football things? Maybe Troy Williams wouldn't go undrafted if he they, had had an opportunity to showcase himself. They all think like you. I'm telling you, I know all the people that are involved in all three of the games that decide the players that come on, they all think like you. But because of the optics, because... I'm just have, saying the NFLPA... But let me let me explain something to you. Because of the relationship they have with college football, because it is kind of their minor league feeding system, and because they don't want to piss them off in their relationship, they don't want to start advertising juniors. Come on out, and we encourage you. NFLPA East West Senior Bowl. The Senior Bowl this year is actually going to going to cover, going to actually carry a couple of extra juniors. So we're trending in that direction. But I think they want it to, like, organically develop. They don't want to be the influencer of it. Kind of like, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I know you may not follow it as much, but in basketball, it kind of went that way, too. And then the NBA finally said, well, we're paying in our G League $500,000 to any high schooler that wants to go. Why? Because the G League, all of a sudden, and the NBA started watching high schoolers leave to Europe. And they said, whoa, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why are we going to let them go there? They can improve our minor league system by adding those names there before they go to the NBA. And so it became a business thing. But the NFL doesn't have that model underneath them, so they have a relationship with college football. And, and not to ruin college football in a way because then you start enticing juniors to leave, which would then take away from college football a little they're bit. Already, they're already leaving. I know they are, but they don't want to be the. They want them to leave on their own. Uh, they don't want to be the ones that say, "Why do you need college? Come to us." You know what I'm saying? The NBA is doing that now because they were losing them to Europe. So I think that's all it is. If you grab any of the guys, if you're able to get to know some of these guys behind the scenes, have that conversation with them, and I'm trust trust me, they will tell you what I just told you. They it's the optics they don't want to be a part of. And so that's why they've restrained themselves from it. That's it. That's the only reason. They think exactly like you, Omar. They just can't act upon it. That's all. You know, it's just one of those things. Optics, bro. That's all it is. It's optics and relationships. All right. Um, so talk to me. What are you hearing about this process coaching-wise? Who, uh, who are – I know we've heard some of the, the names already. Is there anything else you're hearing? Any other names you're hearing? You got you got three former veteran coaches. You got three supposedly offensive wizards and gurus. Um, I'm 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 I can't tell you how it's gonna go. Uh, to me, I pray and hope that they've learned from their past experiences with the numerous multiple first time coaches. It bothers me a little bit that Doug Peterson isn't on the list. I'm assuming they must know that he has, they either know inside information about things that went on in Philadelphia, which I'm sure they do since Chris Greer has a good relationship with the GM in Philadelphia, or um, or, or they know that, that Doug Peterson has a job lined up already. Um, which one, I don't know, but one of the eight jobs that are out there that are open. So. He could be. He could be. He could be a, an addition on the next wave too. Yeah, I mean, but what, what, what's the holdup? They know him. Already. They know him already. Maybe they already have enough insight on him. Yeah, Steve uh, Ross will it, know. It, it's kind of like the Caldwell thing that they know already. Uh Steve maybe, Ross maybe. don't know. Call. Uh, I don't think Caldwell is in the mix, and and I, I understand why Caldwell isn't in the mix. Um, you know, age. Steve Ross does not like to hire older gentlemen. So, and maybe that's the same reason why uh, 
Doug why Peterson would, isn't in the mix. Why wouldn't he want to hire an older gentleman? He can go with them to take advantage of the blue light specials and stuff like that. They can they can. What both, do you think he's Bob Kraft? They can both go to get. No, I'm not talking about an Asian day spa. I'm saying like you know like food specials. You know like. Like Denny's, you know, 65 yeah, minutes. early bird special. Yeah. You think Steve Ross ever ate at Denny's? Yeah, like in 1952. Yeah. He probably owns right. like a couple. He doesn't even know. <laughs> he probably has a Denny's in, in one of his buildings is probably what he does. <laughs> hey, you know, some of his buildings, that's the one thing I have noticed. They they have, they all have like, um, he's Food got, parts. he's yeah. got partnerships in, I forget what uh, Aquinox. Like he's a stockholder, I believe, in Aquinox, and Aquinox is in all of his buildings. I'm like, pimping ain't easy, man. When you're a billionaire, pimping ain't easy. Tell you, brother. I tell you. All right. Um, what else are you expecting them to do this off season with all that money that they're going to have? Man, listen, Big O. I'm not even there with 74. No, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about specifics and names because we really don't have all the information. I, I did see Alan Robinson today on his media campaign on NFL Network basically explaining why his season turned out as horribly as he did and blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm an Alan Robinson fan. I, I've watched him work out many times here at Bomberito. I know how hard love, love him, but too old already at this point. Man, really you're just crazy. such an ageist. Look at you. Look at you. For, for a receiver, yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I might hang in there with What is he, 28? Yeah, dude. He was not going to live out the contract. That's the problem. I mean, you, might get point, one, you might get one good year, but that the bottom's about to fall off when you hit 30. At, at this point, you're, you've got – at this point, he's a three-year guy, so – I don't know, he's, man. And injuries, multiple injuries he's had. Multiple this point, injuries this year. I, I wanted him a few years back, but now that the, the age and time is, has piled on, I would go in another direction. Plus, you did good with Waddle. Go draft another one. And you did good finding a Matt Collins off the street. So go go get uh, another guy in the in the draft. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, think, I think a lot of that stuff is contingent on – who gets the job? Where is he coming from? What are his connections? Because you know this is such a uh, uh, um, connection-based business. It, no, I, it's, agree. I agree. I agree. It, it's it's about you. You go get Dable. Um, you know he brings Dorsey as this offensive coordinator, and then it comes down to who Dorsey likes, and then it comes down to you know. Um, you know, what offensive lineman has Dable worked with? Who's the Bills offensive linemen that are free agents? Um, not not just Dable, but um Dan Quinn. I'm not, not yeah, uh All Dan right. Quinn. You know, what's that, 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 sh that ship sailed for me, bro. Dan Quinn and Leslie Frazier, I see on that list. Uh, you can have them both. I'm good. I've seen the I've seen both of them on multiple stops already as head coaches. Oh, Dan Quinn only had one stop, man. Oh, no, I'm, I'm saying multiple with all of them. I'm saying I've seen him. Uh, Leslie's had a couple. He's had one. I've seen enough from I, all. I, of them. I I like Dan Quinn. Um, I'm not. I don't like Leslie Frazier. And if you just look at the body of work that he had, Dan Quinn's body of work is respectable. It, not as a head coach, a game day coach. He is terrible. His teams were streaky consistently. I mean, constantly streaky. I'm not a Dan Quinn guy. His game day decisions are horrible, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't horrible. Know. He's a great defensive coordinator, just like Leslie Frazier. Those guys can coach my defense any day of the week and twice. So, so, so you're not, you're not, you're not going with the defensive coordinator. You're no, like, it's, it's just I'm not going with the guy that I already saw in in that position, and he didn't convince me. And both of them have the Richie Pettibone disease. They're just coordinators, and there's nothing wrong with that. Richie Pettibold? Oh, well, yeah, I'm old, man. Remember, uh, Joe Gibbs retires from Washington. Richie Pettibone was his defensive coordinator for a long, long time, and he was the man waiting in the wings for Joe Gibbs. So Joe finally retires from the Skins after winning three Super Bowls. Pettibone takes over, and he was a great uh, assistant coach, and he failed, and he flopped. And ever since then... And those kind of coaches, I call it the Richie Pettibone disease. 
And that's what Leslie Frazier and Dan Quinn and some of these other guys, Wade Phillips, and you know, some of these guys that are awesome, awesome. Wade Phillips had a couple good years, man. Wade Phillips sucks as a head coach. Okay. He he looks like the whale in the logo for the Dolphins. Okay, on the sidelines. He is terrible as a head coach. Great, a Hall of Fame coordinator. No doubt in my mind. But I wouldn't want Wade Phillips as my head coach for nothing in the world. Okay. Damn. You got to go back and look at it, bro. No, no. Wade Phillips is 82 and 64 in his career as a coach. Come on, bro. 82 and 64. Not to say that. How many seasons is that, my man? God damn. Hold on. It's too long, too many for me to count. Exactly. Do the math. It ain't that impressive. I'm telling you, he's not good. He's not good as a head coach. He's just not. It's just never been that way for Wade. But it's just one of those things. And there's nothing wrong with you being a great assistant, man. A great yeah. coordinator. You know? Well, he's been an interim coach three times. Yep. No, How did he become an interim coach three times? Jesus Lord. You're, you're, you're in the right. You're, you're, he is the... Um, What's the name of the uh, the basketball coach we had here in Miami that he has been the – Billy Cunningham? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> You're funny, bro. Um, uh, uh, Autry, Ga uh, Gene uh, – not Gene Autry, but uh, it's with like a G – huh? No, not G not Upshaw. He's a basketball coach. Anyway, he's – that guy has ended up like in 87 places and been – uh, an interim coach and constantly proves that he's not the guy uh, over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Wade Phillips is seventy four too. By the way, he he had some good seasons in Dallas before a one and seven season where basically a team quit on him. But these things happen. Yeah, uh, Alan uh, Alvin Gentry. That's it. Alvin. Gen Alvin that's what I was thinking too. Uh, Alvin Gentry has like he's been an interim coach like eight times. It's amazing. Look it up for me. Look it up. For I, me. Oh, I know. I know. You know I'm, I'm asking Sean. I'm asking Sean to look it up because I swear to you, he's been an interim coach at least four or five times. It's yeah. amazing. And he's been a head coach, too. And he's, you know, he's just not. He's the assistant. He's not the head coach. And there's no shame in that whatsoever, dude. But it's just one of those deals. So for me, I've seen those guys already. I don't want that. I, that's why I love Caldwell because Caldwell has been a successful head coach in probably the worst situation ever because the yeah. Detroit Lions haven't won for 70 years, bro. I, I do believe that he 70. has the best resume. He does have the best resume of everybody in, in in the mix right now. He got Joe Flacco and had 11 touchdowns and no interceptions and a Super Bowl. That man's a badass. Caldwell, for me, is the best candidate that the Dolphins could hire. Plus, he will work with them. He's not that guy either. He's not a jerk. And you'll love him, dude. God, you'll love him, Omar. I, I, I dealt with him. I had him, and he wasn't very helpful. He wasn't. He was all right. What? Where? Where'd you have him? Here. You don't remember the two months he worked here? <laughs> he didn't have him. This is coaching, not what he was doing. This is different. You will love him. Trust me. I know people that have covered him. You will love covering him. You didn't cover him as a coach. You you covered him as a like a consultant or something. He wasn't no. going to give you anything. Hey, he point. was the assistant head coach and quarterback coach. Yeah, it's just like he was like on the side hanging out. Now, if you get him as a head coach, trust me, and you get him every day like that and all that, he will. It'll be light years from I, what you. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he has the energy level. That's 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 a good question though. I think if he's going, if he's trying for a job, see, here's the thing. Here's the good thing, Omar. 66. If he's, looking, if he's looking for a job, then he's fine and he's got all the energy. We're talking about like, we're talking about a quality human being here. We're talking about like when you, when you talk about credibility, it doesn't get any better than that guy in Jim Caldwell. So it, he's not a guy that's going out for a check. If he wants to work, it's because he's going to put in the time. We're talking about a pro's pro in Jim Caldwell, my man. So I, mm -hmm. I, I would trust him. It's kind of like um, uh, uh, the corner uh, uh, Minka's hu Minka's husband. Uh, what's his name? Um, come on, man. Minka's husband. 
Uh, yeah, oh, is it is it Minka or whatever the the corner that uh, Jeff Ireland signed with the Achilles? Brent uh, Grimes. Brent Miko. Grimes. It's like yeah, Miko Grimes. Yeah, it's like Brent. When people were asking me about Brent Grimes, oh man, they're signing him. Are you worried about the Achilles? I said, no, I'm not worried about the Achilles. Do you know who Brent Grimes is? That guy's a pro's pro. He's don't worry about him. He's the kind of guy that you don't worry about an injury or health because either way, he's going to play all out and handle it like a pro. So I said, he'll come back from the injury. And sure enough, he came back because you have confidence in the human being. That's the same way I feel about Caldwell. If Caldwell wants to work, it's because he's ready to go, dude. He, he's not coming here for a check. You know what I mean? So you want Peterson, I want Caldwell. And neither one is on the list. How about that? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think Steve Ross has learned from his first-time head coach uh, ventures, the four that he selected. So we might be doing it all over again, which, hey, your team, you write the checks. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. All right, follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly. Catch his work there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel. And do like I do, subscribe to the Sun Sentinel. So we can support Omar and Ira and all the excellent Keep us employed. Yes, Dave Hyde, all the excellent people out there, even though I completely disagreed with Dave Hyde's article the other day. But anyway, I still love Dave Hyde. Anyway, follow him on Twitter at Omar Kelly. We'll catch you uh, on Monday, my friend. Appreciate right. you as always. Always. You got it. There you go. Omar Kelly and the EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins report. Hour number three. From Craig Zins, Acura of Pembroke Pines is next.